Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel, Hazel and Aka Design. Thank you so much for being here, especially at this busy time of year. And um, it occurred to me that I don't know if I've ever done a video on how I do a fabric snippet roll. So, and I guess even if I have, it would have been quite a while ago and probably my approach and so on um, has changed. So I intended to do this and I figured I might as well let you guys in on the process. So what I have done here, okay, I have a piece of parchment paper, sort of just, you know, uh, protecting my mat somewhat, um, hopefully keeping all these bits clean and <coughs> maybe making it easier for you to see. I used a piece of, well, I guess it's interfacing. Let me show you the roll because I, I kept it near me. So, I mean, this was thrifted. There's no, um, uh, you know, labeling or anything left on it, but it looks like sort of that fusible web. I don't think it, it it's not an iron-on one, but um, I think that this width would be maybe for lightweight curtain headers or uh, I don't I don't really know I, I shouldn't guess probably wrong about that I have made snippet rolls in the past uh, either paper or fabric using everything from ribbon uh, adding machine tape uh, I love these cute little ones this I I think I bought a about a five pack of these. Um, they had an old Eaton's uh, price tag on them and they're the cutest things ever. Um, adding machine rolls, there is the, uh, you know, that matte paper for doing drywall corners, you know, before the mudding um, or as a process, as part of the process of mudding. Um, what else have I used? Did I say ribbon? Fabric. So there's no shortage of substrates. And a person should obviously use whatever it is that they have. So um, just to save a bit of time, because how exciting could it possibly be to watch anybody glue things? Oh, <laughs> I guess that's the whole premise of YouTube, isn't it? Watching people glue things. So basically what I did. Now my mat is um, 23 so this is about 25 26 inches long um i think the whole idea with snippet rolls and why some people make long ones is that once it's all done you can roll it up and it takes less room uh, when you store it i've done some of that i've also uh, done others where i have a a strong magnetic clip and I just let things, you know, gravity do its thing and, and they're just unfolded or unrolled and uh, have stuck it to a metal storage cabinet that I have in my wall-to-wall -wall closet here. So what I did, so some of this fabric, I, I should have actually looked for more of it. This um, sort of blush colored, I think this is called Peau de Soie. Um, I had just a few pieces of that, so I tried to spread it around. I might have used that wrong side. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, off to the side here, I have some linen-y like stuff that I obviously avocado dyed. You can see gradations of color. Um, I have this, which is perhaps starting to get more to the plummy side. Uh, just ordinary pink. See, back in the day, I thought stuff like this was called broadcloth. So, I don't know. Is that what other people call muslin? I'm not sure. And then those prints are not applicable to this. Now... <coughs> I'll just sort of drag this closer into view here. 
you'll see that I have a variety of other things in the same, in the color way that I am working on. This is kind of a lighter pink, but it has those, those uh, kind of daisy motifs that might be nice. And again, you know, if I do this right, this will all, oh, and I also um, brought in a few of these, five of these ribbon roses that seem to be all I have in that color. So I pre um, cut some of the, the pieces. This is, I, I don't really have an affinity for hearts, to be honest. I think they're a little too sweet. But again, this can be hidden in, um, in the project. And it's one way to use it up. This is just that lace uh, hem binding thing that we all see everywhere. Um, some avocado dyed eyelet. Now, it looks like I probably dyed this and then cut the uh, binding strip off. That's why it fades out towards the top there. And if you saw the video where I, and that was a total copycat thing, where I used um, photo slides and uh, embroidered linen, embroidered motifs from linens, you'll know that I made a couple where I cut the, the uh, embroidered piece out of these little, um, what are they? Tiny napkins, I don't know. And all I'm doing now is uh, ripping out the center which obviously can either be dyed or use it as is. Oh, and look how off, not square that is. Um, that's always why it's a risk and a surprise when a person does the ripping. So anyway, I now have, let's just do that. I now have a length of this stuff to use and I will work it into this uh, this snippet roll as well. So I'm just basically arbitrarily trimming it off at the corners because those miters aren't going to work. And maybe for now, I won't take the time to do the second one, but it is here if I need it. So, um, Oh, and I also had some, some white lace, I guess, that was kicking around. So I basically, and they were itty bitty pieces and they were kind of irregular. So I also glued that down. So between the fabric that I showed you and those bits of lace, this is the base that I have so far. Most of the edges are, um, you know, frayed, but if they're not, um, I think it will be hidden anyway. So maybe, since I'm not that fond of this, maybe we should uh, glue some of these down first because they'll be further down uh, in the food chain. <laughs> um, again, I'm just arbitrarily cutting off, and I guess I'm doing all the same sizes, it seems. Now, I don't know if five is the magic number here or not, but... You know, we do tend to, to like odd numbers when it comes to a design uh, element. Oh, I also, I didn't show you this. I also have odds and ends of the of, um, Rick Rack in some, you know, like, isn't that a, a sweet little, a sweet little handful of pretty colors. Um, however... I don't know, somehow, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I kind of tend to think of Rick Rack as country. And I'm thinking this may be a bit more, shall we say, elegant than that. So I don't know. Anyway, I think maybe what I'll do is just sort of randomly fill in some of the gaps here. I have at my disposal... Um, my Yoohoo glue stick, Fabri-Tac, and our glitter glue. I think for the most part, I will be either hand or machine stitching this when I'm done. 
So I think as far as possible, I'm going to try to uh, get away with using my glue stick because really all I want, all I want for Christmas is a hippopotamus. All I want is um, this to hang tough, hang together until I can get it to a sewing machine. Boy, this is kind of unwieldy here. Uh, maybe I'll just do it sort of mid-air and not even use a glue paper. The thing with these um, types of airy fabrics is that they, uh, you know, the glue likes to ooze out. So maybe I don't even need this mess here. Um, and again, I have lots of this. I'm not hoarding it at all. So if I end up needing to cut another piece or two, then so be it. It's when you have a finite amount of something that it might be a good idea to sort of divide it somewhat evenly. So I might just move to this end somewhat evenly so that you have a little bit of a distribution. Now, again, it's not the end of the world if you don't, because, of course, with this being as long as it is, unless I used it as a tie, um, which, I don't know, never thought about that. If, I, if a person, uh, and 25 inches probably isn't enough anyway. So uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you don't have uh, enough to totally divide and spread kind of somewhat equally through your um, your project, that's okay because chances are you're going to be, you're not going to use the whole length anyway. You may choose to use enough to make a belly band, so, you know, seven or eight inches, or you may uh, use it as a page edging, <clears throat> or just even as a cluster. So, you know, if I were to run out of a particular piece, it's probably not going to matter in the long run. Okay, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Oh, right here. So I would say I need... Let's do two more. I hope that you are well. Um, I'm feeling better than I have. Um, I'm taping this on a Tuesday. And finally, 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 I'm going to be able to keep my dental appointment tomorrow um, to get that crown installed. I don't know, is that the right terminology? Do crowns get installed? Because that cold sore, it's also the second anniversary of my cold, two-week anniversary of my cold sore, um, has finally stabilized to the point now where it's not going to be a danger to me or anyone else. And um, although I do feel a bit like my glands are swollen, so who the heck knows what's going on there. Okay, maybe we should now try to work in some of this stuff here. Um, too bad it covers so much. Maybe I'll cut it into shorter pieces just to, um, like here I have a bald spot. So if I do it diagonally, I can get them both. Uh, which is the right side. This is the wrong side. So, <clears throat> as I said, most of the pieces, well, let me cover up the contrary <laughs> evidence. Uh, most pieces have a frayed or a regular edge. Obviously not this heart stuff, but um, with, I think that as well as having these little, you know, 
fringy type things having something irregular extending past because uh, hopefully you can see where this ends so I've gone you know a good quarter of an inch on either side um, hopefully that makes it look a little more um, au naturel and not so you know like a machine did it kind of thing And as I said, there are, you know, probably hundreds of videos out there with people showing their process. I remember um, watching a video uh, from Bella's, what is it? Bella's Craft Studio or something? Anyway, that's Rachel. No, not Rachel. Yeah, Rachel and Bella. Um, Rachel's... Um, mother and I guess well I shouldn't I don't know if exclusively but she hand sews a lot of hers so somewhere not so long ago I came across one that I started doing and clearly thought oh this is good bedtime tv watching work but haven't finished it yet so should get on the ball <clears throat> excuse me with that because maybe I'll have oh you can't probably see anything way over there I'll just have that extend a bit past the edge and again if um, regardless of whether I hand or mach machine stitch <clears throat> I'm going to make sure that the glue has uh, thoroughly thoroughly dried because uh, nobody wants to gum up, uh, you know, hand needles or sewing needles. That also reminds me, I should do myself a favor and be a good listener and change the needle in my sewing machine. Um, <clears throat> my sewing machine is an old Canmore. Like, I have sewing machines. I have, you know, one of those, fan well, it's probably not fancy anymore, but one of those fancy-dancy uh, Singer sewing machines that, you know, has programmable, well, to some degree, programmable stuff. How are we doing here? <clears throat> I should probably put one kind of smack dab in the middle. Um... I have uh, a Janome, and it was just a thrifted machine that I um, got when my mother passed away. I, um, I have a heavy duty, what is the brand name though? A real, uh, an old timer, really heavy, like you need, you need two good men to lift it. Um, and then, I don't know why I was still looking for a machine. Like I don't use my, the most expensive one, that Singer, for anything like this. I think I'm going to put something at the end here. Um, anyway, long story short, I Googled, you know, sewing, sewing machine, whatever. I found out, I found this sewing machine place in Edmonton and you know kind of a nondescript location pretty small but the guy sells um, like commercial industrial machines and of course he had I guess he spent well I don't know his career but he was um, a Sears um, repairman so he has very much a respect and a soft spot for Kenmore uh, sewing machines. And he also sells those that are like big, big as a table, like for, you know, ind well, industry manufacturing, whoever, the big heavy duty ones. Anyway, he sort of did a bit of a sales pitch on me. So now I'm using this island. Did a bit of a sales pitch on me really talked up the Kenmore and 
uh, of course, because he's an, an old repairman at heart, he had refurbished, you know, tuned it up, refurbished it and all that. And I got it for, I think, maybe 250 bucks or something. And this is, boy, this is a long story to get to a short little bit of advice here. Anyway, I told him, you know, I'd be sewing paper and fabric and whatever, whatever. Anyway, he said, and I think this rule is regardless of what you're sewing with it, that a person should be changing their needle, their sewing machine needle, after every four hours of sewing. And I know that none of us set a timer when we sit down at our machines. But I can tell you, I haven't changed the needle once since I bought it. And I'm starting to think that that's not very smart. Um, the guy obviously knows his stuff and he had it, you know, humming along like, like a well-oiled machine. So why am I not listening to him? Goodness knows, I have more needles than I'll probably live long enough to use. So it, it's one of those kind of, it's one of those unsolved mysteries. Why do we not do, why do I not do the things that I know I should be doing? Uh, let's talk about a treadmill while we're, while we're at it. Um, you know, so we can, we can be smart cookies and still not do what is in our best interest. So I think I'm making a promise to you here and now that once this video is over, I'm going to make a beeline to my sewing machine and change the needle. Um, because again, it is not hard to get packages of uh, thrifted packages of needles. Um, I mean, that, that's a pretty common occurrence. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Now there's still places where it's thin and I can see the, uh, what you may call it, the substrate. Okay, I cut pre-cut a couple pieces of that and I certainly have more. Whoa, <gasps> so sorry guys. Nothing like hitting you in the forehead. Oh, and I also have this. This is kind of thick stuff. It's a braid and you can see here it's already letting go. But I didn't do anything about that because I thought if I cut that off, then it'll just start uh, unraveling again. So this will also be a nice thing. But again, closer to the top layer. So we're still building the base as far as I'm concerned. So now let's add some of this. And again, you know, I think it's a matter of, whoops, personal taste. Um, really, boils down to personal taste, I guess, as to when you believe that yours is done. Now, let's cut a few more of these or tear a few more of these. Uh, oh, that didn't go well. I mean, I'll still use it, but still, that wasn't so good. Oh, I guess that's kind of cute. All it did was remove the uh, the um, that netting part, and now it, it sort of looks scalloped like the little flowers. Uh, let's do a couple more. Oh. Okay, we'll glue these down and then reassess. So, um, what's new, guys? Have you given up? <laughs> Have you given up watching YouTube videos because there's no time and you're busy doing holiday related activities? Christmas parties. It's not easy crafting when you have a lampshade on your head. Um, I still, well, okay, so I said that 
and again these dates are immaterial to you because who knows when this will air but um i said that i'm I have that dental appointment tomorrow i'm also going back to see the the um traditional Chinese medicine guy that I've been seeing and I have one little eye auction item that I bid on that I have to pick up and I'm also hoping that I can put a check mark beside Christmas shopping I think now it's boiling down to you know gift cards to sort of make up the difference you know whatever a person sort of budgeted for uh, spending on people you get some some physical items that are going to be a surprise woohoo and then you know also some more practical things like in the case of my daughter and her man um, because they just bought that house in October you know just moved into this house in October they are uh, you know like getting a getting a gift uh, card from winners slash marshals slash wait no we don't have it. winners marshals is that it um so those you know that stuff is pretty eclectic and you don't get millions of the same oh and home sense you don't get millions of the same thing so you might end up with a one of that you know where you feel like your decor is a little more unique than than if you shop in certain other places okay how are we doing for distribution i'll probably need one more after this and notice, too, that I'm changing angles. I'm trying to uh, work uh, top and middle and bottom. You know, say those pink hearts here. It's at the bottom here. It's at the top. You know, so it's... Um, it just mixes it up a bit. And again, for those of you who wonder, well, why do people collage? Why do people do this? You know, and then, sorry, I, I know that I'm probably not totally visible at all times. Um, okay, I said I would use one more piece. I've got a short piece and a long piece here. So where is the short piece? Wouldn't it be good if this was on a on a card? Oh, there it is. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, I think I was saying. Um, why? Why cover this up? Or why? The, th the point is that you don't actually know what is going to be visible in the end. But the, the richness of the layers is going to be um, what makes the difference. So if it was just a scrawny little thing, you know, with a couple of... Um, with layers like a substrate and maybe one or two layers on top of that, it would it would just look, well, scrawnier. <laughs> okay. Now, this is maybe getting a bit too, mind you, it's not too bad. Maybe I should also hide some of this pink in there because this is a wee bit off. Okay, this is my piece, so maybe I'll decide that. <clears throat> Let's even this out a bit, so I'll kind of just zigzag around the flowers. It sort of squares this off and makes it easier for me to, <clears throat> excuse me, fold it and put it away. I 
This isn't a Marie Kondo folding demo, but there are ways to do it so that it is a little bit better than some other ways. Okay, so here I've got oh, almost five. Well, if I tear this. Ugh. I started watching... Um, I stayed up way too late yesterday, which probably doesn't help with the uh, swollen glands thing. Um, I stayed up way too late watching a few episodes of My Life with the Walter Boys. Is that the title? Kind of, uh, you know, good, wholesome story. I can't remember how many parts there are. Maybe 10 or so. So, you know, sometimes with those... Um, let me look here. I hold this up to the camera, so that's going to help me see any better. I think this is the wrong side. Um, now, this I might just... Hmm. No, it'll make a mess. I'm going to just dab at the design with the glue stick um it's so easy to get hooked and think oh just one more episode oh just one more episode and then you realize it's 12 30 <sighs> not good not good not good not oops i forgot to check okay that's the back side Oh, should I should I tell you what happened to me yesterday? You know, I realize sometimes when I tell these stories that it must seem as though I've got the lousiest luck ever. But honestly, I don't I don't feel that way. And I don't know why because sometimes when I hear myself retelling a story, I think, "Holy, you poor kid." But yet I don't feel that way in the moment. <clears throat> anyway, you may remember that I had an ongoing problem with my um, hip, right hip and knee. You know, difficulty with uh, the thing that drove me into the arms of the medical community was the fact that I was having trouble even stepping up on a curb. And of course, stairs are, you know, worse and so on. And it was it lasting a long time and so on. Okay, I've got three of these down. Uh, let's put this one here. Anyway, long story short, physio, massage, Cairo. Uh, finally, I asked the doctor for a requisition for some x-rays. Let's see, is there something structural happening? you know bone wise <clears throat> if there's arthritis which like let's let's be real anyone over the age of uh, probably 25 has the beginning of arthritis um anyway so long story short go all that yes okay there's signs of you know some arthritic changes blah 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 and the medial side of the right knee Medial meaning the center of the body, lateral meaning the outer edge of the body. So the inside of the knee, there's a narrowing of the space, but there's no sign of fluid or whatever. So all in all, uh, you know, rather uh, like not surprising about arthritic changes. <clears throat> not bad in a hundred year old woman. Um, and it could have been a heck of a lot worse. So it, it's good. That, I mean, it was a good news uh, result, I'd say. Anyway, I wanted to convey that to the physiotherapist that I've been seeing. Anyway, long story short, treatment is going ahead as it as always. Uh, heat pack. Uh, oh, she does the manipulation and the stretching and whatever. Um, heat pack, interferential. So that's the stuff with the, um, you know, the current, the the uh, the little pads and the current. And then, uh, you know, she comes back again and does some more manual manipulation 
after all this other good stuff has happened. Anyway, first time in my life. Oh, and they always roll the little cart, you know, within reach so that you can adjust the current. I should figure out what I'm doing so I can work and talk at the same time. This is a small piece. Now, I don't know how it looks to you, but it is a light pink. So I think it fits right in. Why not use it? There's also this that's more like a pale salmon, but let's use up the smaller piece. Oh, and I also have this. Or did I show you that already? And I have this, and this, and this. And this is very similar to what I have going on already. This is, this is fairly heavy. Is that some staining or did I coffee stain this or what is going on here? Hmm. Never done anything like that, but anyway, uh, let's carry on with this piece as per the original plan. So, anyway, so the machine is within reach so that the patient has control of the, uh, you know, like there's a toggle switch where you can up the current as it uh I'm going to have to fix that as it fades over time or as maybe the reality is or as you get more tolerant of it. So I don't have my finger on the toggle. I mean, I've had this a dozen times. I know how it works. And all of a sudden I get this terrible um pain that just won't stop right at the crook or right where the knee bends and right sort of behind the knee. So I quickly start trying to toggle down the current. Now what I should have done is called out to the physio because I didn't know this was kind of a new, not new, but not the regular girl that was assisting her. And had been the one to put the electrodes and stuff on and, and set this all up. But I did nothing. Because, you know, you got those curtain walls and there are other people. And, I mean, stupid. But I should have done it. Anyway, it hurt like the dickens. Um, but... The rest of that, and I think I'm usually on there for 15 minutes, or they're on me for 15 minutes. So anyway, I, uh, you know, I get through it. Um, the person comes and, and takes all that stuff off me. I thought, now I didn't, I, even at that point, I didn't say anything. Again, dumb. Um, I thought that I sensed that she flinched a bit when she removed that first electrode. But again, still, I say nothing. And I honestly don't know why. I'm not, I'm not afraid of, of um, asking questions, making observations. And part of that comes with a certain confidence in that I know a bit about how the world works and part of that old lady bodaciousness that after a while you stop giving a damn about, you know, you just you just speak the truth or the truth as you know it. Because too many people and not enough people do, so somebody better. <laughs> you know, but again, still I say nothing. And, you know, finish the treatment and away I go. And that thing is hurting because, of course, as I'm sitting to drive home and so on, you know, it was an over an hour to drive. Um, you know, it's hurting, hurting, hurting. 
And then that evening, I, and it was, you know, I don't know why I didn't ask my husband to be the photographer, but so I contort myself so that I can take a, a, a bad <laughs> photo of that area. And I see that it looks, it looks angry. It looks hurt. And no wonder it, no wonder it was hurting. It looked like it should hurt. Okay, I have one more piece. Where am I going to put it? Where am I going to put it? So anyway, I do, so I don't really, you know, eventually it stopped hurting and I didn't really think more about it. But then yesterday, I went for a massage. And I just, you know, I'm still, in, I hadn't undressed yet. And I say to her, you know, and you're going to see when you start working on my leg, you'll see that I've got this little boo-boo on my, you know, behind my knee. Anyway, she takes a look at it and she says, oh my goodness, I think it's infected. And I, of course, don't have my glasses on. I'm face down on the table. I say, take a photo. So she stops everything, goes, gets her camera, takes, you know, typically massage rooms are pretty dimly lit because there's that whole relaxation spa, you know, zone out kind of mood they're trying to create. Anyway, so she tries with her flash and with her without her flash and she takes these two photos. I said, okay, send them to me. So she does. And you know, her photos weren't great either, but I could see why she might think that. It was red around the area. I didn't feel, okay, typical signs of infection are redness around the area, warm to the touch. I believe pain is a factor as well, and maybe a discharge. So it wasn't, again, still don't have my medical degree, I didn't, I wasn't totally convinced that it was getting infected. But I thought I would be a fool not to uh, <laughs> get a more skilled opinion than my own. Um, she said, well, just go and ask the, the, uh, the photographer. Go and ask the pharmacist. He's really good. And I thought, well, okay, it's not my town. I don't whatever but okay uh, well it turns out I don't like him I mean it's one of those things you know you either do or you don't and I don't uh, I thought he'd looked very disinterested and wasn't about to offer an opinion so anyway just to get rid of me he said well I think you should go see a doctor I said, okay so I go to my car I I Google what the wait time is at the bigger city hospital that would have been, you know, reasonably close and then decide, no, I can't afford that kind of time. I'm going to, you know what, if I did this down the middle, that would be really no different than if I zigzag down the middle, would it? Uh, whoopsie. I thought, okay, I'll go to the smaller hospital. Presumably the wait will be shorter. Uh, and to be honest, I I'm usually, I don't think it improves one's experience or one's mood to time waiters <laughs> or hospital emergency rooms. Um, you know, if it feels like, oh, your meal is never going to come. Sometimes my husband has, well, you know, it's been 35 minutes. And I'm thinking, well, okay, does this make you feel better? I wonder if I'm now, if I've now got so much of the same going on here that I need a bit of white to off. Mm, no. Anyway, let me uh, finish my story and stop this video. I've got stuff dangling from my fingers. Anyway, I'll put some of this braid on. And you know what's going to happen the minute I cut into this. This is going to let go. So maybe for this 
one. And I can still use this. I can cut that fuzzy part off. Um, anyway, so I don't know, really know how long I was there. It was probably a couple of hours, all told. Anyway, I was horrified to see that now they've got these, well, they have a computer on this wheeled stand that they just that a nurse you know will wheel from here to there and then there's this intake process well do they take you into a room for a modicum of privacy no they don't this is like this place is sort of set up like a pod or well, no, maybe I said that wrong. So the central large nurses station and then these hallways that branch off into, I guess, pods or wings or whatever. Anyway, I should put a little dab right here so it doesn't continue to unravel. Although if I'm stitching this, I'll make it my business to secure this. Oh, brother, that's really holding. Maybe I need to use art glitter, or um, the other one, Fabri-Tac. Anyway, so there's this teeny tiny hole in the wall waiting area. It had four chairs in it and we were almost knee to knee. So this young man gets taken before me. So he's, you know, he's gone up to where her computer is and it is maybe eight feet from where I'm sitting. I can clearly hear every question she answers and every answer he gives. And I'm thinking, OMG, how stupid is this? And it's not just like what brought you here today. It's everything about your medical history going back to Columbus and um, you know those kinds of questions and of course in any setting whether you're you know locked it not locked but you're in a room with a doctor looking eyeball to eyeball patients can lie patients can leave out things that make us look bad or dumb or whatever but I mean they're asking things like smoking drinking street drugs um, apparently in some cases depending on who's presenting themselves not who but what I guess is presenting they would also ask about you know uh, physical abuse and things like that so anyway now this woman happens to know me not well but we know each other so I don't particularly like that at the best of times I don't think anybody's you know it's not her business or whatever but here I am so I'm sort of whispering my answers to her she says what about surgeries and I say you don't have enough space for that and um, I says you mean like starting with tonsils when I was a kid and she said, yeah, start at the top of your head and work your way down. Well, my goodness. So I do it. And of course, well, when did this happen? And when did that happen? What year was that? And she too hates this system and is not making any bones about that. And I said, well, you know, there's this thing where you can, you know, subscribe or whatever, become a, get a username and so on. And and log into your own health records. I says, but you know, the first iteration of that didn't have a great deal of information. I said, has it changed? Is it better now where, where you could see your prescriptions and you could see test results like lab results and x-ray results and, and all of that? And then she said, yes. And I says, you know, Back in the day, a person would go to a doctor's office, they hand you a clipboard and a paper form, 
and you struggle through this yourself. Okay, when did I have cataract surgery? When was my rotator cuff surgery? Blah, blah, blah. And you do it to the best of your ability. She says, well, no, now this is in this province-wide system and anybody, regardless of where you present, anybody can, any doctor can pull this up and then they know everything. And I said, so then why, if, I, if all this is in the system, why are you asking me all of this? And of course, she didn't have a good answer. And she does say that a person will probably get asked these questions every time. So I'm thinking, is this the stupidest thing to come down the pike in a long time? Anyway, so eventually my turn comes. The doctor I've never seen before uh, looks me over, looks at my doohickey and says, well, I don't think it's infected, but then you certainly don't need an antibiotic. But I'll give you a prescription for an antibiotic cream um, she says, I believe that that is new skin that is uh, forming, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can use this, this cream, this antibiotic cream as a, as a preventative measure. So that's what I'm doing. But I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take <laughs> to get a medical system that makes sense for both the healthcare providers and the poor schnook patient who is showing up there and just wants something to feel better. <laughs> like, I don't know. And the thing is that a hundred years ago, when, when the province first, uh, you know, tried to get rid of all the little teeny, uh, hospital boards that were around every corner practically and uh, regionalized the whole provincial system I was on that board and I was on that board for five years and presumably that was going to be the answer to all the health woes well clearly it's no, there's no easy answer anyway Dumb, dumb, dumb is all I can say. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to stop here. This, um, you know what? It might be a good idea. Oh, and I didn't do anything with the roses. Okay, this will be my plan. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and use, obviously, a thread that, that matches. I'm going to secure the bits and pieces that... I'm going to, well, I'm going to secure it as, as well as I can. And then I will know that my ultimate, like there's this. I mean, I have more of it somewhere. Um, where though? Where, oh, where? Oh, see? And I also, I also have this. Oh, see, this has a bit of... I salvaged this off some kind of... I don't know if it was lingerie or whatever, and then I think I dyed it. This has a bit of a sheen to it. And then I can do a top layer with, with um, roses. Oh, I should show you one other thing. I went to... Okay, I don't think this exists in the States, but in Canada, there is a store called Princess Auto which is, you know, who, like, kind of like to know the origin of that name. Anyway, for, and I consider a man's domain. And for the longest time, my husband would go, and I would sit in the car, reading a book, or looking up and seeing fathers and sons, and grandfathers and sons and grandsons, and all these different permutations of men going into the place. And almost without exception, they're all coming out with a package or, or a truckload of stuff. And then one day, I needed to use the washroom. Oh, and this store really did an expansion. So I went in and I, 
I then thought, holy cow, this place sells any everything under the sun. They send out these little mini catalogs, I don't know how many times a month. Anyway, tucked in one corner, there's an area that they call surplus. And that's where they have the stuff that women care about. So I was in there the other day. Oh, I'll tell you, I got a good deal on, um, I bought two new cutting masks because the price was right. So this one that I have here, this sort of nice colored one, but is really starting to show some wear and dirt, is 23 by whatever, 23 by 18 maybe. Anyway, I got two of these other ones for $8.99 and they're bigger than this. And one side is metric and the other side is imperial. Anyway, I was in there. Now this, trust me, I, I hate guns. I don't know anything about guns. This is an ammo box. But I, the reason I liked it, well, number one, the price was pretty attractive. But, and I should take this off because I'm keeping it. Um, the reason I like this is because it's rather a narrow format. And I'm thinking, you know, I've got some of my best real estate tied up here with tools that I use very seldom. So, you know, I don't want one of those fishing tackle type toolboxes. I mean, we've got those kinds of things around here with a double decker. I just wanted a place to throw all my pliers and stuff. So, oh, and my cute little, these guys. Anyway, the reason I'm showing you this is because I was looking for my wire cutters. So this way, oh, and I also have this set. If I can make my idea work, I'll do a video on that. But anyway, so this is narrow enough that I can stick it in the knee hole of my desk. So it's close enough. At this point, I'm just going to cut the head off the stem. Um, this is one of those things that when the time comes, I'm, whoops, I'm probably going to have to bend it like so. I'm either going to snip it at the last minute right before I put it into some glue, because if you cut it too close, the, the ribbon, the rose unravels. But I'm thinking that could be pretty nice. I will also look for maybe some jewels. Um, you know, considering that I have quite a bit of jewelry that I'm not wearing or that I have purposely bought as thrifted items, I sure don't use it very often. Anyway, I'm going to stop there because I've told you probably more than you wanted to know. Okay, so here's my handy dandy little tool thing. Okay, guys, that is it for today. I hope that um, if you haven't done a snippet roll, fabric snippet roll, that you gather together some items. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a monochromatic thing like I've done. It could be, you know, primary colors and all the colors of the rainbow. And I will update you on what I do next. Probably a little too heavy duty for this. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't already uh, done so, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. Uh, give me a thumbs up and write a comment. That's not much, is it? Thanks, guys. Bye.